Hi, Pastor Andrew here at Bayside. From this last weekend, we just finished our series called Seven Words to Change Your Life. And we were talking about new. This is what we talked about. A new covenant through the cross, everyone. A new creation makes us a Christian. The new community, we're part of the church. But listen to this. We have the hope of a new city, and it's the certainty that we have in our hearts. It's not often we talk about heaven, but we're going to show you a clip. It's all about heaven and the certainty that we have. I remember one time, 34 years old, happily married, loving my kids, loving life, healthy, fit. And I was sitting at home, and we Christians call it this, having devotions. And that means it's me, my Bible, Jesus, and a Starbucks. <laughs> I'm just sitting there. And um, there's worship music going on. I'm trying to do my best to sing to it, you know. And, and I remember that day as I was sitting, just worshiping God, reading the Bible. It was like his presence filled the room. And everyone, this is not just, oh, a pastor's privilege. This is the right of every single Christian believer, every new creation because of the new covenant. Listen to me. You may not be able to see the person of Christ, but you can feel the presence of Christ. Amen. One day in heaven, we will see the person of Christ, but on earth, we can feel the very presence of Christ. Are you with me, everyone? You get this? And I was sitting there with the Starbucks, the Bible with Jesus, and it was just so, he was so real to me at that moment in time. Now, listen to me. I love Isabel. Love my children, and I want to see them through to all their dreams and goals, all of that stuff. But at that moment in time, listen to me, 34 years old, young, fit, and healthy, I could have gone home to be with the Lord. It was like at that moment I was closer to heaven than I was to anything in this world. It was like at that moment in time that I just suddenly thought, there's more for me up there than there is anything here. There's more calling me there than holding me here. Are you with me, everyone? And the only way I could put it, it's the way that Dietrich Bonhoeffer put it, it was like I was divinely homesick. Divinely homesick. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who himself was martyred, said this, no one has yet believed in God and the kingdom of God and not been homesick from that hour waiting and looking forward to being released from bodily existence. Apostle Paul puts it this way, we are confident of eternal life. I say, and we'd prefer to be away from the body and what? At home with the Lord. At home with the, and this is the promise of Scripture, that it is absent from the body and present with the Lord. No in between, no holding stations, everyone. It is the moment that we die, the moment that we close our eyes, take our last breath, we go to be with the Lord. But it's not only no more separation, it's no more tears. Is anyone in here tired of tears? Yes. This is Veterans Day. Some of you guys and girls, you know what I'm talking about here. Tears from the moment and some tears since. We understand that. Tears to do with death. Some other people, it's tears to do with divorce. When I started talking about covenant earlier on in, I mentioned married something in you just, oh, it feels like it's been shredded again because of what you went through, because you stood at the front of a church. You were that guy, you were that girl who stood at the front of a church. You looked someone else in the eye. You knew you were before the living God. And you said, I do, I do. And they said, I do. And they didn't. And you did, but they didn't. Thank you. <laughs> it hurts real bad. It hurts real, real bad. Disappointment sometimes comes into your lives. But listen to what the Bible says. He will what? Wipe away every tear. My God is so good that he's got Kleenex. My God is incredible. He's so personal that he comes to each of our lives. And he said, I know on this side of eternity you will have your tears. But when you get to me, I will wipe away personally. A personal job in each of your eyes. I will wipe away all of your tears. And it will be joy with me for eternity, everybody. This is why we need this hope inside of our hearts because we will cry our tears in the side of eternity, but there will be a day. And let me tell you, you will have so many more days with no tears than de days with tears. The days without tears will far outnumber any tears, days with tears on this earth. Amen. And I love this one here, no more death. 
That's it. No more death. You see, without Christ, it's bleak. Bertrand Russell, the philosopher and agnostic, he said this, death is like suddenly the night of nothingness. The night of nothingness. Anyone got a bit more hope than that? The night of nothingness. I mentioned earlier about David Watson. David Watson was the English evangelist, and his last book was called Fear No Evil. And David wrote that book um, after he found out he got cancer. And it's the story of basically how he goes through this battle with cancer. And he lost that battle. And sometimes we say, oh, we lost him or we lost her. Listen, we don't lose anyone. I love what David says here. Look at what he says. The church is the only society on earth that never loses a member through death. Amen. Do you hear that, everybody? Listen to me. I ain't going to lose you and you ain't gonna lose me. Now you might be promoted before I'm promoted, but I'm right behind you. (laughs) Yes, I'm gonna find you. The church is the only community in the world that never loses anybody to death. It's gonna be Bayside forever, everyone. Bayside forever, we are going to be together because of what? Because of the new covenant and the power of the cross. Because I am a new creation, I am now a Christian. I'm part of the new community, the church, and guess what? We're inseparable. Not even death can separate us in the long term. In the short term, it does. In the short term, it does. But you know what? Apostle Paul says this, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, when the perishable, this body has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up by victory. Where, O death, is your victory? And where, O death, is your sting? It's gone, everyone, because of Jesus Christ. Does anyone feel feel good about the new city? and the certainty that we have because of what Jesus did on the cross. It's pretty good, isn't it, everybody?